Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. With the upcoming release from Luminar Neo, their fall upgrade, I thought I would make a video about color masking. It's an incredibly powerful and useful tool. I'm super glad that they're adding it to this upgrade. And one of the things that you may think about is how does it compare to HSL? Because color masking allows you to isolate a color and then go in and make adjustments to it, right? It's pretty straightforward. But it sounds a little bit like HSL, doesn't it? Where you might go in and you can pick the individual color channels, blue, red, green, etc., and adjust those as well. Well, it's not really an either or. For me, it's really a both. And I want to show you how you can use them together to really get uh, like fine grain, perfect control over an image. And also, of course, point out the differences and why this new tool matters so much. Let's get going. I've got this photo here, which if you look at the before, in the after, before and after, I did a little bit in Develop Raw, slight adjustments to the light, fix the distortion, I cropped it, and then I used Structure AI to go negative across the entire photo. You can see that here, Develop Raw and Structure AI. Now I want to get into the key stuff that I was talking about, which is comparing color masking with HSL. So the first thing I want to do is go into the color tool. Now, personally, I don't really recommend using saturation and vibrance here that much especially across an entire photo. I prefer to isolate colors and control them. And in the past, I've done that a lot with HSL. But now you can use HSL in combination with color masking to really get that control. So what I want to do is first show you if I take uh, just the saturation slider of the blue. If you look at this photo, you're, th you're thinking there's a lot of blue here. There's blue in the clouds, there's blue in the sky, there's blue in the waves, there's blue in the uh, foreground, all that stuff. And that's true. If I just start dragging the blue slider, you'll see here that all of the blue gets impacted across the entire photo. Well, what happens is that is essentially letting Lunar decide what it considers blue, and it's figuring it out for you and putting that saturation increase into everything that it considers blue. Well, the beauty, of course, of color masking is that you control where those color goes, uh, colors go, because I might want to increase the saturation of this blue, but then also decrease the luminance to make it a little bit darker. So before and after, it looks fine, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. I like to use this color masking tool because it allows me to apply different amounts of saturation and luminance adjustments to different shades of the color blue, and that's what I'm going to show you. So I'm going to click on color masking. It's this tool here, and of course, it comes in and says analyzing your photo. And the first thing I want to do is start down here in the foreground because that's blue, but it's a lot darker than the blue in the sky, and I want to kind of accentuate that difference. So I just click there once, and it will create a mask for me as it just did, identifying everything that's that same shade of blue. Well, in reality, it's not truly blue because if you look at the, the range dot here where it shows what color it is, it's more of a kind of a darker kind of charcoal. The beauty of this tool is I can increase or decrease that range. So I can go to 100 and say, hey, Luminar, get more stuff similar to that. Or I can go the other way and say, get less stuff similar to that. Well, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go to 100 because I like how it kind of frames the photo. And then I'm going to go back here to the adjustments and I'm going to go into luminance and pull that down. So now when I'm adjusting this luminance, I'm only adjusting it in those parts of the foreground and not uh, similar colors in the sky because I want to adjust the sky, but I want to do it differently. Same thing for saturation. I might want to add a little bit more blue, but I don't want it to be in the same amounts in both places. So again, this is about control, which is super important. I think masking is a key critical skill in editing. And when I learned how to do masking years ago, it really took my editing results from one level to the next level. It's super important, and that's why I love this tool. So now you look at the before and the after. Before and after, I've got a nice little bit richer foreground that's differentiated from the sky. So in other words, they did not get the same edit because I didn't even touch the sky. Now I'm going to go touch the sky. So color, masking, and get into the color masking tool. And I'm going to start with this little darker cloud right over here. And so I'll start with that one. And again, you give it a minute, it figures out, and it applies a mask, and there you go. And again, you can increase or decrease the range. Maybe I'll increase the range a little bit, see how that looks. I think that looks fine. And what I want to do here is go into saturation and maybe give that just a little bit and go into luminance and maybe drop that just a little bit. So all I'm doing is creating a little bit more contrast in the clouds. If you look at the before and after in the clouds, before and after, creating a little bit more moody kind of look, a little bit more stormy kind of look, because I'm creating that contrast in the clouds by changing the luminance value. 
and it's a different value than what was in the foreground. In other words, you don't peanut butter spread a luminance or saturation adjustment across everything that's kind of blue in the photo. You pick specific kinds of blue, specific shades of that blue, and apply them individually. So again, it's about control before and after. I'm going to close that. I'm going to use it one more time to show you another thing, which is maybe I want to get these pinks and oranges and all that. Well, there's not a pink in HSL. There's an orange, there's a yellow, there's a red. But if I go click on color, open the masking tool, I'm going to get this kind of peach color here that's slightly in the, uh, in the sky along the horizon. And it grabs that. And I'm going to go ahead and increase that to 100 to increase the range, meaning give me more of that color. You can see how it kind of expanded. Uh, notice this color is what I identified. That's not a color in the HSL slider. So in other words, you can't really find that color in HSL. And now that I'm there, I'm actually going to use these adjustments. I don't recommend using them across the entire photo. But in this case, because I used a color mask to isolate those warmer tones and slightly expand the tonal range, I'm now, uh, or color range, I should say, I'm now able to apply saturation and vibrance just to that. So I give it a little bit more pop, but just in those colors. So I'm not impacting the blues, the grays, all the other various kind of shades of blue that exist in this photo. So before and after. It's pretty subtle, but it's a nice little pop of color. And it's probably a little bit too much. I'm going to pull that down a little bit. The bottom line is able to quickly and easily isolate it because of the color range masking tool. Now there's more tricks and tips and fun you can have with this tool. It's not just about playing with the color sliders in HSL. Of course, this masking tool exists on all the other tools that have masks. So Accent AI is a great one. So for example, I might come in here and I don't want to apply Accent AI across the entire photo, right? Because it'll get over the top really quickly. But what I do want to do is apply it to certain areas. Now in the past, you may have seen me in videos apply this with a luminosity mask. Still a big fan of that tip and trick, and I use that a lot. But you can also apply X and AI with a color range mask. So I'm going to come in, and again, I don't want to mess with that foreground. I like it. It's fine. The color, the light value, kind of that contrast, I totally like it. But maybe I want to play a little bit more up here in the sky to create a little bit more drama. So once again, color range mask, found that. And I'm going to leave it. You can adjust if you wanted to. I could go back to the other mask. I could get a brush and erase all that from the surf. So you can stack it just like you can other masks. But now I'm going to apply Accent AI just in that area. So maybe I'll go to 50 here just to see what it looks like, which is usually a bit too high for me on any photo. But when I'm isolating it to a certain specific area like that, if you look at those clouds before and after, right now, and this is a case where I do need to come in with the brush and erase it from the surf because I'm noticing that it's getting kind of washed out. So let's go ahead and do that so that I can show you, you can stack the mask and also so my photo looks a little bit better because I didn't like what it was doing there. But um, I like it a whole lot in the clouds. I just don't like it in that section there. So it's gone, it's in the clouds. And if you look at my before and after, before and after, again, a little too heavy handed, but drop it to 35, it looks pretty nice. While I'm at it, I've already got a mask. Maybe try a little sky enhancer as well. It creates a little bit more drama. So again, it's a delicate dance, figuring out where you want the mask to apply and also what slider amount you want, especially with Accent AI and Sky Enhancer, because they both can get pretty intense if you're not careful. But before and after, before and after, created a nice bit of contrast and pop in that sky with a color range mask on Accent AI. So again, it works on any tools. And another tool that I really like, and this is the last example, is Mystical. But what Mystical, Mystical will do is often come in and it'll, it'll darken the stuff that's dark. It'll brighten the stuff that's bright. So it creates additional contrast. Well, if I applied it across the entire image, the bright parts, like along the horizon where that orangey kind of warm color is, they'd get too bright. But with the color range mask, I can control this once again just by adding it to specific areas. So maybe what I want to do is come in and just get like this tone again down here in the foreground. And I'm going to go ahead and increase that color range um, all the way to 100. There you go. And now my mystical is just going to apply there. So the increase in contrast is really just impacting those kind of darker areas. And so that's giving me the ability to create a little bit more contrast down there, right? Before and after. And 40 is too high. Maybe 26 or something is a little bit better. But if you look at the before and the after, 
the color range masks allow me to isolate that section really quickly and powerfully and control my edit. So whether you're using it in combination with HSL because it works really well together, as I showed you here, or using color range masking on other tools, Accent AI, Mystical. I use it with Develop quite a bit because Develop gives you lots of sliders to control all sorts of things. It doesn't really matter what the tool is. The point is you have that kind of control now that you didn't have before to isolate a color and make specific individual adjustments to just that color or a narrow range shade of that color within your image. So before and after, before and after, and if you look at this sliding window, Again, there's a little distortion correction here, but if you look at that, I've really been able to come in and adjust the tones uh, and the colors really quickly and easily by isolating them with a color range mask. And that's very different than if I just came in with HSL and tried to do it by itself. Hope that helps explain kind of how this tool works, why it's important, how powerful it is, and some creative ideas on how you can use it. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more Luminar Neo videos. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, you guys take care and adios.